This man invented this opening. Then he sacrificed the bishop here. Then a rook here. And he managed to win this game with 97.4 accuracy. Alexander started off the game with e4. And his opponent Hans replied with the French defense. d4, d5. Here, white could either go knight c3, knight d2, push or take. All are very solid choices. He went for knight c3 and after knight f6 he went bishop g5 pinning the knight and after e7 e5 he played a very cheeky move h4. This is known as the Alakine attack. He invented it. It's only move 6 and he's ready to sacrifice. Black takes the bishop and wins a pawn in just 7 moves. If you play a normal move like knight here, developing the knight, that is not the point. The point of this sacrifice is to put the knight on h3, kick the queen so that your knight can go to f4. You might wonder, Knight on f3, f4, what's the difference? The difference is the knight does not block the queen anymore. Now the queen can go to g4. Look at the g7 pawn. Also, when you sacrifice the h2 pawn, the rook file is open. A pawn sacrifice for initiative. In this position, black needed to play a6. Cover up the square for the knight and then prepare some kind of c5 break. But he messed up. He played knight here. A brutal mistake. Looks like a very normal move. You'll develop the knight to c6, may you get the bishop out, long castle, go to g6. Doesn't look that bad. But Alakine punished him. Queen g4. Simply developing the queen, free tempi, attacking the g7 pawn. You might say, what's the big deal? I'll push it. And now the game is already over. A simple pawn push. Defending the pawn is resigned down. Maybe you can pause the video and try to find out the move that wins the game. The queen on g4 is looking at this bishop. So this pawn is pinned. White can exploit that pin by a knight sacrifice. If black does not take the knight, the knight will go to f6. Super annoying. And if black takes it, not only white gets the bishop, white gets the b7 pawn. Now the rook is under attack. Black saves the rook, now he gets the d5 pawn. Now c7 is under attack, f6 is there for the knight. Black defends it, bishop comes out. Look at the white pieces. Already two pawns up and all the pieces are flowing in. So after queen g4, a simple move like g6 is game over. So black tried f5, the only way to stay in the game. White takes, and now if black takes the pawn with the queen, again it's game over, sacrifice time. So he has to take with the pawn. This time the sacrifice does not work, as black can take the knight. White is not in time to take the bishop, as the queen gives a check to the king. To set up this sacrifice, white played a strong move, castle, getting away from the discourse check, and now he's ready to sacrifice. Also, maybe the rook goes to e1, open e file for the rook. Black played c6, simply defending the d5 pawn, preventing the sacrifice. Rook came to e1, pinning the e6 pawn. Again, if black is stupid and develops, it's time to sacrifice on d5. Pawn takes, take back. Cannot take, the queen falls off. If the queen goes to d6, you get f6 and then you put the queen on g7. Knight g6, you take this pawn and you have 3 pawns for a piece and the king is going nowhere. Moving the queen to d8, protecting the pawn and covering c7 does not help. White can go to g7 and there's no way to save the rook. Knight here, bye bye king. Nowhere for the king to run. Black needs to give away the queen and your queen up. So the only move that saves the game is king here. Imagine, it's just move 13 and you have to move the king. Alekhine continued by another good move, rook h6. Putting this rook on the 6th rank, looking at this f6 pawn and if he pushes, maybe at e6 pawn. Just look at this position. Both the white rooks, both the white knights and queen are already playing. And what is the black army doing? Have not even left their home. They are sleeping. If black tries to run away with the king, it's over. The sacrifice on d5, it strikes again. 
pawn takes you take back if the king moves you win the queen if the pawn takes you win the queen anyways so black tried e5 attacking this knight attacking this queen trying to get some kind of play going alakain simply went queen h4 that knight was never under attack the rook pins the pawn now the rook and queen look at the f6 pawn black develops the knight and alakain simply developed the bishop but he could have he could have already sacrificed the knight on d5 takes takes now the knight attacks the queen and the f6 pawn is gone queen moves away you take the pawn now the disco is lined up king moves away you take the pawn on e5 you have three pawns for a piece and look at this king but he went bishop here simply getting the last piece into the action e4 trying to block it out now if you are white here what would you play you might be tempted to go f3 the pawn is pinned you push the pawn apply some pressure but actually that is a mistake white gets in f5 and this e4 pawn is going nowhere also he is threatening to trade a queen if you said sacrifice on the pawn you were correct White could have sacrificed on the pawn. Black takes and then you take back with the knight. Now the e file is going to be open. Knight is ready to hop in. They see his pressure on f6. Black is doomed. Alakine was worried after he sacrificed the bishop. He'll take with the rook and the queen will go to g7. And he was not sure if this was winning. So to avoid that, he played queen here. Simply covering the g7 square and next move he'll sacrifice. If black plays f5, trying to prevent the sacrifice, that does not work. You save d4, but what about d5? And by playing f5, this diagonal is open. Look at this king. You can sacrifice on d5. Takes, take back. And if the queen goes to f7, queen check, it's over. King moves. Knight c7 is a checkmate. Blocking with the knight does not help as you can simply take. So black tried queen f7 and Alakine went in with the bishop sacrifice. Takes and take back with the knight. Now the e file is open. Knight is ready to go to d6. Threaten a back rank mate. Hello to the king and the queen. If black gets greedy and takes that dummy pawn on a2. That's too much. White can simply take on f6 and the rook is in. One rook on the e file, other rook on f6. Looking at these sides, the knight is there. Queen to g7. One solo king can't do anything. So he tried rook here, attacking the queen. White simply put the queen on a3, trying to go to a5. Check him out, or maybe look at this diagonal. If black tries queen here, trying to trade again, you give a check on a5, force b6, and then go to c3. Now the queen looks at this pawn. Knight wants to look at this pawn. Launch a disco because the queen protects the rook. Way too many threats going on. He tried queen g7, attacking the rook, hoping the rook goes back. But Alakain went in. Knight d6, sacrifice the rook. King is the only piece that matters. If the queen takes the rook, knight f7, white simply wins the queen and it's over. Black tried knight b6 and then he played knight e8. Look at this knight attacking the queen, opening up the square for the queen to hop in and check out the king. The queen cannot take the rook as queen e7 is a checkmate. If the queen goes to d7, you take on f6. The knight folks the queen in the rook and it's over. If black tries knight c4, attacking the queen, you simply go to c5. Now the queen is under attack, knight is under attack and nothing changed. In the game, black tried f7 and the queen went in. Nowhere for the king to go. With this position, the knight on e8, rook on the e file, other knight here, queen here, black resigned. If black tried to block it with the bishop or knight, let's say bishop here, queen c7 is a checkmate. Blocking with the queen does not change anything. White can take on f6, block with the queen and another checkmate. 